Continuing our discussion of shortest path algorithms, we're looking at all pairs shortest path, and we want to use the algorithms that we talked about in the last video that use this kind of pseudo matrix multiplication algorithm. We want to actually see how they work on a particular example graph. This is the graph that we've been using for, for all of our examples. And I have some Scala code here that takes this same graph that we've played with before and I actually convert it into a connection matrix. So I still have the adjacency list, but I put in something that has a connection matrix. You'll note one thing about this is the diagonals in here are zeros. Um, because in order to get from a vertex to itself, you don't need to go anywhere. So we put zeros along the diagonals of our connection ma matrix. My graph is represented as a vector of vector of doubles. And because I'm going to type that in a lot, I give it a new name called graph. Also, to help us print things, I just wrote a little function called print. And I print out the original connection matrix just so that we can see what our graph looks like. The extend shortest path, um, the pseudocode uses some nested for loops in order to create this. In fact, it has three nested for loops. Because I'm writing this in a functional way and I'm building a new graph, I use vector.tabulate. When I pass it two arguments, I'm effectively creating two for loops in there that, and these indices i and j will run over those. And then the k for loop is being done with a for, fold left that goes from zero to l dot size. The k is the second argument to the function. Um, and I start off with the version being infinity, or the, the value, or l prime being infinity, and then it goes through and does mins along the way. So then the slow version of this simply ex calls the extend shortest path multiple times. Um, okay, and uh, once again, instead of using a for loop, I, I use a fold operation here. It hits me that, so for the fast version of this, I there are two basic changes. One is how far I go should be the log base two of the size. And then instead of combining um, L with W each time, I combine L with L base glass square. So one way to think about how this algorithm works is that at each iteration, so one way to picture the weight graph, the, the connection matrix itself, is that is the shortest path from any vertex to another vertex, assuming you're only allowed to take one step. What extend shortest path does, if we call that, do the pseudo multiply on the weight again, when we do it once, we get what is the shortest path that you could get if you're allowed to take two steps. And then we do it again, that was the shortest path you're allowed, that you can get if you are allowed to take three steps, etc., etc., etc. And so for this version, we do it v minus one times, and that gives us the, uh, the shortest path for, for getting you know, to anywhere in the graph because we can't take more steps than that. Here, instead of growing as from one step to two steps to three to four, it's from one step to two steps to four to eight. Okay, and uh, let's run this. And remember the first output in here is our original connection matrix. This connection matrix was rather sparse. So it has, we have zeros on the diagonals here, and uh, then a number of other values scattered around between a whole bunch of infinities. This is the output from the slow version. This is the output from the fast version. They should be identical. And we can do some sanity checks. So from getting from zero to one, the distance is three, and well, that one's obvious. One that's a little less obvious is what about getting from one to zero? Well, the shortest path there is a four plus a one plus a zero, so it should be five. 
and indeed we can go look in the matrix and see that we have a five there. So that is a running through and doing some code for the um, all pairs shortest path that uses the pseudo matrix multiplication. Of course, the challenge with these is that they are order v to the fourth and v cubed log v. Turns out that we can do better than this by trying some slightly different algorithms.